Hi everyone and welcome to the GMS Magazine channel. I am Paco Garcia, your host, and um, I bring you today a review of something wicked, uh, and it truly is. This is a tiny, tiny little role-playing game authored by Gareth Graham, the South African designer who brought us Children of the Fall and who has, as I have been told, a surprise up his leave for next year that I am very, very much looking forward to. However, in the meantime, what is Something Wicked? Something Wicked is a small role-playing game of pulpy horror where the players take on the roles of investigators of the supernatural but very much in a 1950s 1940s kind of pulp comic booky atmosphere which is actually really cool and i like it uh, the game is meant to be bringing us into this uh, mega epic, completely ridiculously over the top, sometimes comedic, more often than not, than not very noir sort of environment where the monster in the lagoon and the attacks of the rotten tomatoes kind of take place, you know, or the brides of Dracula sort of atmosphere. Nosferatu it would be also a very good example. Well, pretty much just. I think Bella Lugosi and Boris Karloff and you're pretty much there. Pretty much. The system is an incredibly easy system to use. You just roll two D6s, check the results, seven or more, you're good, six or less and uh, you're not so good. That's it. That is pretty much it. Uh, there's a little bit more to it, but I'll go into that in a second. Character creation is just a whiz. You can build pretty much anything you like, even though there are some samples and there are some professions in the book itself. They can be a little bit limiting at times. So um, if you want to change the era, for example, or if you want to do something a little bit different from a different culture, then you're going to need to tweak it a little bit. But it, because it's so simple, it's so easy. It really takes absolutely no time at all to decide that this, uh, you know, skill is going to be able to do so and so, and uh, this other skill will give you an advantage, and this will give you a disadvantage. You distribute a number of points among your abilities. Some abilities you will be very good at, and some invariably you're going to be bad at, unless you want to create a really flat character that isn't very good at anything, but it isn't very bad at anything either. That's entirely up to you. But the game has been designed with the idea that, yes, you're going to be good at things, and you're going to be bad at some other things. So that way, working in teams is actually necessary, because you will need to complement each other's abilities and skills and expertises, so you can actually survive whatever it is that you're going to come across. I liked the health system. You have a wheel, it's the health wheel sort of thing, where uh, between one and six points of damage, you recover overnight, Anything between 7 and 9, that's going to take you a little bit longer. These are serious wounds. And anything between 9, between 10 and 12, that's really serious. And things become harder and harder unless you seek medical help right away. It's a kind of dynamic system. I really liked it because you can use it for pretty much anything. And it's great to add suspense to an already difficult situation. It is lethal enough that you don't want to ignore it and forget about it, but it is easy to deal enough that having a break can actually save your character's life. So it very much puts the resilience of the characters to the test. The book production is actually very good. The illustrations are lovely. Everything is in the right place. The layout is simple, which is one thing that you would expect from a game like this. And every section has been well thought out. Is this game perfect? No. Um, it lacks, it could be a bit more in-depth in some places. 
for instance, if you are really new to role-playing games and if you are uh, really new to horror, this may fall a little bit short. You may need a little bit more guidance. If you have already played uh, horror games or you have a very specific idea of the kind of horror you game, then you're going to be absolutely fine. But if you're a complete newbie, then you may need a little bit of help. And there's one thing that's thoroughly lacking, uh, and it's an adventure or two. We, we could do with having a couple of examples of what kind of adventures the investigators can get themselves into. Because as it is, you're just left out. Uh, having to come up with whatever it is you want to play, which is a shame. Uh, yes, it is true that creating adventures for this game is as simple as watching a film and then that's it. And in my case, I've just improvised a whole campaign uh, based on two or three movies that I had in mind when I started playing with literally no script whatsoever. So it's not difficult to come up with something because the rules are so simple that you don't get bunked up with them. You can concentrate on developing the story rather than thinking, where do you have to roll the die what for what? No, it, it doesn't work like that. So if you're looking for a very easy game to read, I mean, come on, look at the book. You, you can read this in one afternoon. If I can, trust me, so can you. It's, it's next to nothing with plenty of possibilities and a system that you can expand as much as you like to fit your gaming needs, I would take a look at this. Something Wicked really, really lives up to its name. Thank you so much for being there. It is truly and genuinely appreciated. Please leave me your comments down there. It would be great to hear a few adventure seeds for a game like this. But until the next time, I will talk to you very, very soon indeed. Take care.